Is it finally time to admit that Ukraine is not going to win a war against Russia? United States and European officials have begun quietly talking to the Ukrainian government about what possible peace negotiations with Russia might entail to end the war. That's according to one current senior U.S. official, one former senior U.S. official. Uh, via NBC News. Now, those conversations have included broad outlines of what Ukraine might need to sacrifice in order to reach a deal with Russia. The talks reportedly began amid concerns among U.S. and European officials that the war had reached a stalemate and concerns surrounding the United States' ability to continue providing aid to Ukraine. Entrepreneur Ar Ar Arnaud Bertrand wrote on X, of course people will be told that it's not a defeat, merely a stalemate that NATO comes out of it reinforced with additional members, that it's Ukraine or Zelensky's fault anyhow, blah, blah, blah. But the crux of the matter is NATO defined an extremely clear objective, which was to drive Russians back to pre-invasion lines. To directly quote Anthony Blinken, and that failed miserably despite their unprecedented efforts, which means that the West is much less powerful than they thought they were. They just couldn't collectively defeat Russia. Mm. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky recently gave these fiery remarks on his country's fight against Russia. I have a lot of power, but even feeling strong and have a lot of energy, it doesn't mean that we want to fight all our life mm. because the price is high, like I said, because the war takes the best of us, the best heroes, the best men, women, children. That's it. But we are not ready to give our freedom to this terrorist Putin. That's it. That's why we are fighting. So there's been some reporting for a few days now that Zelensky feels neglected, despite Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary's assurances that we have enough money to fight both wars. It just doesn't seem like there is perhaps the budget or the political appetite to do so. And I so, mean, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say we're, we're in the exact position that you and I, and we're not alone in this, a lot of other people predicted Ukraine would find itself in at about this time. It would find itself in a position where it is no closer to winning this battle against Russia than it was at any other point. In fact, it's farther away from that goal. That they have depleted, and forget about, we could, we could supply them all the weapons on Earth. They're going to run out of people to actually fight with the weapons. Um, Russia is still committed to this. It's, it's not giving up. There's no chance, very little chance, of Putin's regime suddenly being toppled because of discontentment from within. In fact, the effort to do that by the Wagner Group was soundly stopped, and then the leader of the Wagner Group was exploded somehow, mysteriously, in mm -hmm. a plane. So this is a situation we, we knew we would come to, a situation where Ukraine and Russia need to negotiate, and there needs to be some concessions on both sides. Ukraine's going to have to make a, a, perhaps a territorial concession, and that's what many advocates of peace and skeptics of U.S. involvement were saying from the get-go was what was going to happen. So if we're getting to that point anyway, when do we admit we should have started from there or we should have quickly pivoted to there? If, if, the, if there's actually a threat to Kyiv and we repulsed it, when did we say, okay, now let's negotiate? But instead we've come to this, where we've, we've wasted so many lives lost on both sides and U.S. dollars to get a situation where probably we're going to have a part of Ukraine that's either Russian or independent or something. And that's what was long predicted to be the case. But by the Biden administration said, nope, we're going to give them whatever they need for as long as it takes to defeat Vladimir Putin, because that was our objective. And our hope was regime change. That was a very naive hope. Didn't work out. It worked out exactly the way the skeptics said it would exactly along the time frame they predicted for it to happen. So this is a real win for the non-interventionist voices, in my view. Look, we were all there, and we all remember that in the weeks following the invasion, of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, all of this, to some folks, seemed very clear. Russia is a nuclear power with infinitely more um, capability in terms of uh, man manpower and military power than Ukraine. That absent a war, world war global investment from the rest of the world in defeating Russia, which is obviously not a scenario people should be having any appetite for whatsoever. This was going to come down to the exact moment we are now. But what has happened in the last almost two years is that we've had about half a million deaths of Ukrainians and Russians 
and a number of civilians as well, not just military members. You've had an incredible waste of resources, both Ukraine's own domestic resources, the downstream implications of Ukrainian wheat not being able to get to the rest of the world in the global south. We've had the largest um, infrastructural sabotage and climate event uh, or, or pollution mm -hmm. event in the bombing of the Nord Stream pipeline. You've had less important but still significant political effects for Joe Biden as he's looking to reconstitute his base going into 2024. And we're having the exact same conversation about what the ter territorial concessions Ukraine is going to have to make to, Re to Russia that we could have been having weeks after the crisis emerged. And let's not forget all of the reporting about how Boris Johnson and the, the U.S. and Western forces purposefully thwarted negotiations that Zelensky was open to at that time, because nothing has changed about the reality of the situation between then and now. Right. No, exactly. And, and you know, let's keep in mind— Look, I, I understand that no country wants to just wants to get invaded and then, as the price of peace, give up part of the country. The U.S. wouldn't stand for that. A lot of nations wouldn't stand for that. Um, let's. But it seems a little weird to be so against the idea of self determination for different regions or different people. Remember, this is a this is a part of Ukraine that is Russian speaking and is Russian identifying, and the idea that it would just be impermissible to have some other political arrangement for this region doesn't actually seem to comport with liberal values to me, with Western values. Um, we've said we're fighting this as democracy versus authoritarianism, but, of course, Zelensky's government has resorted to all sorts of illiberal methods, including with other political parties in the country and independent media. And, and you know, given it, it starts to seem like a wash, or like a well, good luck to you. But why are we so involved in this? What's the compelling U.S. interest? It doesn't seem like an egg, the existential democracy or liberal democracy or Western values actually being at stake. And you know, when you just read, when, when we're getting to the point now where we're hearing reporting that military advisors, European advisors, are telling Zelensky like this doesn't look winnable. You got to negotiate. But we all, but we knew that. We knew that. We don't know anything. We knew that a year well, ago. But it was treated as though you were, you were literally called a Putin puppet. You were a yeah. sap for Putin for articulating the obvious strength imbalances that were going to lead us to this point. And 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 Europe, European countries never thought this was so important that they had to lift a finger to do anything. It was all the U.S. It was all the sugar daddy of the world. Well, also. I mean, part of why we ended up arguably potentially with the Nord Stream scenario happening the way it did was because there was some question about whether or not Germany was willing to make its people pay the cost of not having this lower-priced um, uh, energy coming from uh, Russia that had invested billions of dollars into this pipeline to get, so that the West could support this proxy war against Russia. And it was the hemming and hawing about, of, of Germany saying, well, I don't know how involved I want to get into this conflict, that led Joe Biden to say, we have ways, and those weird confessional statements he made prior to Nord Stream broke, uh, getting um, blown up. There are ways to make sure that the, the, the oil, the Russian oil never comes to Europe. There are ways. There are ways. So there was, there was obviously some ambivalence on, in Europe as well, just not wanting to get engaged, not much less not wanting to pay for it, but not wanting to do it in the first place. Now, to your point about um, the Donbass and this Russian-speaking um, region and whether or not they should be able to allow to have some autonomy, remember, that was the focus of the Minsk Accords to begin with. And Aaron Monte uh, recently tweeted out that, according to Jack Matlock, an ex-U.S. ambassador to the Soviet Union, he said, quote, if Ukraine had been willing to abide by the Minsk Agreement, recognize the Donbass as an autonomous entity within Ukraine, avoid NATO military advisors, and pledge not to enter NATO, then Russian invasion probably would have been prevented, and Ukraine would have kept all its territory except Crimea. Instead, the Biden administration prioritized sacrificing Ukraine to bleed mm -hmm. Russia. How many lives and dollars were wasted only for a Western Without actually warriors. making, at the time, Ukraine a part of NATO. It, it was that leaving—it um, was that middle ground that was like the worst of all worlds, where Russia feels concerned about Ukraine potentially being part of NATO, but they're not technically part of NATO, so they can be invaded. It just seems—it seems like a, a lot of catastrophic policy mistakes that brought us to an inevitable point that was well predicted. But here we are. Um, so hopefully there can maybe be—maybe Zelensky gets that there needs to be negotiation that won't make him happy, but it is what it is. And we'll have more rising right after this.